Hey, good morning, friends. Miss Laura here at Bartlesville Public Library for a weekly virtual story time. Are you ready? Got some really good stories today. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? How are you today? All right. The first book I'm going to read today is brand new to Bartlesville Public Library. A brand new book called Best Day Ever. I love good days and I hope today is one of your best days ever. This is written by Marilyn Singer and illustrated by Leah Nixon. Looks like puppy's waking up. <clears throat> Wake up happy, have a stretch. Then I sniff the air. Lick your face a bunch of times. Glad that we're a pair. Best day ever. After breakfast, time to dig. Got a special box. <coughs> Excuse me. Find a bone, a tennis ball, and some dirty socks. Best day ever. <coughs> Excuse me again. There's a kitty in the yard. Chase it up a tree. Let that cat know I'm the boss until she chases me. Best day ever. Steal a frisbee from a pooch where we go to run. Eat a hot dog off a bench, but I lead the bun. Best day ever. Head up farther in the park. Swim across the lake. Scare away some wiggly thing. Heard it's called a snake. Best day ever. Race through puddles full of mud. Love the way they squish. Roll on something that smells great. It's a nice dead fish. Best day ever. Quickly jump on my best friend. He begins to yell. Down, girl, you get off me. Phewy, what's that smell? Ew, not the best day ever. I hate this tub, this kind of wet, and the taste of soap. Will this bath be over soon? Something tells me, nope, not the best day ever. Down at last, I give a shake because I'm feeling damp. Bump a table and, oh no, I knock down a lamp. Not the best day ever. Then my best friend hollers, now what did you do? Tuck my tail and slink away, feeling really blue. Worst day ever. Later on, he finds me curled up on a rug, snuggles close, pets my head, offers me a hug. Not the worst day ever. <clears throat> I'm sorry that I shouted. I know it wasn't cool. I think we need more lessons. We'll go to training school. Not the worst day ever. <clears throat> Nothing's broken. You smell nice. Everything's okay. Hurry, 
he says, bring your ball. Let's go out and play. Best day ever. That's the end. Sometimes we have a good day and a bad day all in the same day, don't we? Speaking of days, do you know the days of the week? Let's see. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We have seven days in the week, don't we? I know a song about it. Here it goes. Days of the week. 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 There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. 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 Let's do it again. There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. 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 Very good. All right. The next book I'm going to read. No, I'll save that one till the end. Do you have a grandpa? Some of us have grandpas. Some of us don't. But we're going to read about... Now, does grandpa ever babysit you? <clears throat> this book by Jean Reagan and Lee Wildish is called How to Babysit a Grandpa. Hmm. Here he comes, how to babysit a grandpa. Babysitting a grandpa is fun if you know how. When your grandpa rings the doorbell, what should you do? Hide. You might wiggle and want to giggle, but don't yell, Grandpa, not yet. Shh. Here's how to stay quiet. Pretend you're a shark waiting for lunch. Act like a pirate spy or be as still as a lion statue. As soon as your grandpa says, I give up, pop out and shout, here I am. When your mom and dad leave, you pat your grandpa's hand and say, don't worry, they always come back. Then right away, ask him if he's hungry. Here are some good snacks for a grandpa. Ice cream topped with cookies, Olives served on fingertips. Hey. Anything dipped in ketchup. Cookies topped with ice cream. That's on the list twice. After snacks, it's time to take your grandpa for a walk. When it's cold, be sure and bundle up. When it's sunny, sunscreen up, especially the top of his head. Remember to grab his hand when you cross the street and remind him to look both ways. What to do on a walk with your grandpa? Step over sidewalk cracks. Look for lizards, cool rocks, and dandelion puffs. If there's a puddle or a sprinkler, show him what to do. When you're back at home, have him shut his eyes while you get ready. And then, how to entertain a grandpa. Somersault across the room, put on a scary play, and show off your muscles. You may want to have some extra tricks. Grandpas always clap for more. Pretty soon, he'll want to join the fun, so play with your grandpa too. How to play with a grandpa. March with your drum, but give him a kazoo. Build a pirate cave. Make sure you can both fit. 
Watch out for sharks in the water. Don't let your feet touch the floor. When your grandpa says, nap time, it's time for his nap. The best way to put him to sleep is have him read a long book over and over and over and Even if you're sleepy too, babysitters have to stay awake. While he naps, draw a picture for his fridge. What to draw for a grandpa? A pirate shark battle? Your favorite dinosaur? You and your grandpa splashing in a puddle? Then, wake up your grandpa. You might want to try lifting him with your muscles, tickling his nose and his toes, or singing on top of Old Smokey louder and louder. Now ask, will mom and dad be home soon? Your grandpa will look at the clock and say, yikes, soon, very soon. Good babysitters can't leave messes, so turn on some bouncy music and get to work. When you hear your mom and dad, grab your grandpa's hand and pull him behind the couch. Show him how to be quiet. Check how to stay quiet on the first part of the book. And whisper, see grandpa, they always come back. Now comes the hardest part, goodbye time. How to say goodbye to a grandpa. Surprise him with a picture. Give him a hug and a kiss, a hug and a kiss, and a hug and a kiss. And ask, when can I babysit you again? The end. There was a song in there about spaghetti. We sang part of it. I'm gonna sing the rest for you. Do you like spaghetti? all covered with cheese and meatballs on top of, well, okay, this said on top of Old Smokey, but this is on top of Spaghetti. So it's sort of a different song, but the same. Okay. On top of Spaghetti, all covered with cheese. I lost my poor meatball when somebody sneezed at you. It rolled off the table and onto the floor. And then my poor meatball rolled right out the door. It rolled in the garden and under a bush. And then my poor meatball was nothing but mush. <laughs> Let's sing a song we all know. Uh, the itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. All right, I'm going to read one of my old favorites about a Door, an adorable little girl named Molly Lou Mellon, written by Patty Lavelle and illustrated by David Cattrall. Isn't she cute? Stand tall, Molly Lou Mellon. Look on the back of the dog. I wonder if that's Molly's dog. Molly Lou Mellon stood just taller than her dog and was the shortest girl in the first grade, but she didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, walk as proudly as you can and the world will look up to you. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon had butt teeth that stuck out so far she could stack pennies on them. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, smile big and the world will smile right alongside you. So she did. What a beautiful smile she has. 
Molly Lou Mellon had a voice that sounded like a bullfrog being squeezed by a boa constrictor. She didn't mind, her grandma had told her. Sing out clear and strong and the world will cry tears of joy. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon was often fumble-fingered. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, believe in yourself and the world will believe in you too. So she did. Then Molly Lou Mellon moved to a new town. She had to say goodbye to her grandma and all of her friends. And start in a new school. On the first day of school, Ronald Durkin called her Shrimpo in gym class. When the game started, Molly Lou Mellon caught the football, ran under the legs of Ronald Durkin, and scored a touchdown. All the children thought, wow, she's good. And Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the second day of school, Ronald Durkin called her Bucky Tooth Beaver. Well, Molly Lou Mellon took out her pennies, stacked 10 high on her teeth and smiled as big as day. All the children smiled with glee and Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the third day of school, Ronald Durkin said, you sound like a sick duck, honk honk. Molly Lou Mellon sang out a quack so clear and strong that it made Ronald Durkin somersault backwards, hit his head, and have to go to the nurse. All the children cried with joy to be free of Ronald Durkin for the rest of the afternoon, and Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the fourth day of school, Ronald Durkin said that she'd made the snowflake all wrong but Molly Lou Mellon opened up her paper and revealed the most beautiful snowflake of all. All the children ooed and awed, even Ronald Durkin. On the fifth day of school, Ronald Durkin brought Molly Lou Mellon a stacking penny for her tooth and smiled at her. That night, Molly Lou Mellon took out a pencil and paper and wrote a letter to her grandma. Dear Grandma, I wanted to tell you that everything you told me was exactly right. Love, Molly Lou Mellon. The end. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. All right, our last book is special because it's, um, it's related to our special take-home craft this week. Our friend, Miss Melissa, who has been putting to, not Melissa, I am so sorry, Miss Rebecca. Miss Melissa is still here, but she has a different job in the library. Miss Rebecca is our new friend in the children's department, and she has been putting together some really fun take-home crafts. And this week, you can get one, and it is a bean sprout craft. You can, you can watch a, a bean sprout can take care of it. It's like a necklace too. Sounds mysterious, doesn't it? Come pick one up. Scarlet Bean by Karen Wallace and John Berkeley. I feel like I've read this one recently, but you know, since we're doing a bean sprout craft and 
This is about a little girl named Scarlet Bean, who's a wonderful gardener. Thought we'd read it again. Look, oh my goodness, I did not eat breakfast this morning, and looking at all these vegetables makes me so very hungry. Mmm. There she is. When Mrs. Bean first saw her daughter's face, it was as red as a beet, and the ends of her fingers were green. We shall call her Scarlet, declared Mrs. Bean. She will grow tall and strong and do something wonderful. Mr. and Mrs. Bean lived in a house that looked like a garden shed. It was cozy and made of wood, but it was very small, so they worked outside as much as they could. Scarlet lay in her stroller and listened to the flowers grow. And when she slept, she dreamed of doing something wonderful. On her fifth birthday, Grandfather Bean gave Scarlet a vegetable garden. What a gift! Her mother gave her a set of tools with wooden handles. Her father built a wooden fence to keep out the rabbits, and he made a white gate that Scarlet could open herself. Scarlet loved her new garden. She pulled up weeds. She dug in the soil until it was as crumbly as chocolate cake. She planted a row of carrots, a row of onions, and a row of parsley. That night, when she went to bed, the ends of her fingers glowed like green lights. Can you see that? The next morning, Scarlet ran to her garden. You're never going to believe this. Her carrots were as huge as tree trunks. Her onions were as big as hot air balloons, and her parsley was as thick as a jungle. Everyone in the village came to help. They used bulldozers to dig up the carrots. They drove forklifts to carry the onions, and they cut the parsley with chainsaws. Mrs. Bean's kitchen was too small for so many vegetables, so she made soup in a concrete mixer. The house was too small for so many people. So Mr. Bean served the soup in the garden. Everyone said it was the best soup ever. And when it began to rain, they ate second helpings under the table. That night, Scarlet Bean dreamed of something wonderful she crept out of bed, and in one hand she held a small trowel. In the other, she had lots and lots of seeds. High above the meadow, the moon hung like a pearl in the sky. Scarlet dug a hole and put all the seeds at the bottom. As she covered them with earth, the ends of her fingers flashed like green stars. The next morning, the sun rose like a huge golden coin, and in the middle of the meadow stood a castle made of vegetables. It had turnip turrets and a drawbridge held up by corn cobs. A cucumber tower stood at each corner. My, my. Mr. Bean couldn't believe his eyes. It was the house of his dreams. Mrs. Bean kissed her daughter's face. I knew you'd do something wonderful, she whispered. Scarlet Bean was so happy she turned as red as a beet, and the ends of her fingers sparkled like fireworks. And they moved into their new vegetable castle that very night. The end. That's beautiful. All right, so you can come and pick up a take-home bean sprout craft, but we also have another craft going on, and it's a way that you kids can help the library. The library has a bookstore, and during the month of October, Miss Diana, who, who helps at the bookstore, is going to put together grab bags of mostly grown-up books to sell for Halloween. They're going to be scary books and science fiction books. She's going to put a bunch of books in a bag and sell them for a small amount. We need kids to decorate these grab bags for our book sale in October. So you can come to the library and pick up a plain white shopping bag. 
and you can take it home and decorate it and then return it to the library. Or we've got arts and crafts supplies set out at the library if you'd like to decorate it there. You return the decorated Halloween bag to us at the Youth Services desk and in October your bag will be used to fill with books and sell them for Halloween. Doesn't that sound fun? You guys can help us at the library by decorating bags for us. So we've got the bean sprout craft to take home. You can decorate a Halloween bag and bring it back to us so we can use it in the bookstore in October. Um, lots of fun stuff to do. So I will see you next week.